Now, after Russia annexed Crimea, the West was swift to impose sanctions. It was, leaders said, the only way to deal with Russia. However, those sanctions appear to be allowing certain sectors of the Russian economy to flourish, with the government working to ensure its food security and self-sufficiency. Far from a simple punishment, Moscow is counting on the sanctions to help kick-start its economy, as Thomas Lowe reports. The aisles of Russian shops are full to overflowing. The embargo announced by Vladimir Putin in mid-2014, however, meant milk, meat, fish, fruit and vegetable products from many Western countries disappeared from the shelves. Katya has a young family. Finding the food she needs is no longer a problem. The situation was really strange when the embargo came in. The shelves were empty. Now there are a lot of different brands I can choose from. The embargo means Russian producers can invest in a market that's been cleared of competition from large Western companies. The government here is pumping money into import substitution, a key new strategy. Between 2015 and 2016, it plans to release the equivalent of some five billion in US dollars to support local production. Southwest of Moscow, in the Kaluga region, proof money is hitting its mark. A year ago, this land was empty. Now, 20 hectares of greenhouses grow tomatoes, cucumbers and lettuce. Another 80 hectares is slated to be built soon. The project has benefited from financial breaks, government subsidies and help with utilities. The surprise here is that the head of production is Dutch. And that's because these greenhouses have incorporated cutting-edge technology from the Netherlands. Uh, this greenhouse is uh, six meters high and have uh, automatic vents and energy curtain to uh, protect us from the cold. We symbol the sun in the winter so we can have uh, production in the cold winter months. The company Agroinvest uses technology from Europe because it isn't yet available on the Russian market. Russia ready also for producing their own greenhouse is no another step in the future. First, food, so you are not dependent from the import. But Russia's less protectionist than it seems when it comes to technology and other key inputs that boost its productivity. The tech used to monitor the pools at this fish farm is from Israel, while the fish spawn comes from the US. We don't buy fish eggs from Russian producers because we can't be 100% sure of their quality. Unfortunately, in Russia for the time being, there's neither the equipment or factories that can guarantee us the standard of fish we get from European or American eggs. Fish imports have dropped by half since the embargo came in, and that's a blessing for producers. The company already raises 510 tonnes of trout a year. And right next door, foundations are being laid for a new factory where 4,000 tonnes of Atlantic salmon will be produced from next year. It goes without saying the embargo has boosted our development. Before we had to find and convince our clients, but now they're the ones queuing up. Like most of the agricultural producers in our country, I really hope the embargo will stay in place, at least for the next two or three years, because we have to consolidate our place on the market. The factory receives subsidies on loans provided by the state and given out by the region. But the funds don't always make it to where they're intended. The governor of the Bolgorod region brought up the problem at a recent meeting with the prime minister. In the first quarter, we only received 1.2 billion rubles out of the 2.8 billion we were promised. The agriculture minister got involved. All of March, we kept asking for that money, but we were repeatedly fobbed off. They told us there's no cash, that there's no liquidity. The finance ministry defended itself. We give out all the necessary money to the Ministry of Agriculture. We haven't held back a single penny. We asked the Agriculture Ministry if the import substitution program is lacking the finances it requires. 
It's a problem of coordination between institutions and nothing more. It was brought up at the Cabinet of Ministers. Decisions were made and I'm sure everything will be sorted out in the next few days, but that can happen anywhere. As for the economic crisis, it presents a lot of advantages. So there's no problem with financing? No. One sphere where money is clearly lacking, however, is scientific research. This public institute, founded in 1944, has seen its funding slowly decrease year by year. Yet it's developing techniques to make products which can no longer enter the Russian market, namely blue cheese and parmesan. Specialists at our institute have knowledge about how to control the chemical and microbiological processes that take place as cheese matures. What gives these scientists hope is that companies and farmers from across Russia are now coming to them to take part in their paid training courses. Is the mold already in there? Yes, it's in there. Do I have to put it in the ferment? Yes, I put the ferment and the mold in together at the same time. Russians love cheese, and there's not enough on the market. So people have big expectations of local producers. A niche has opened up. We want to produce, and the government's supporting it. That's why everyone's rushing to be trained. All those working in the agricultural sector have benefited from the embargo. The rush now is to become more competitive because they know that sooner or later it will be lifted.